Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired! President Trump passionately responding to NFL players who have been protesting on the field during the singing of America's national anthem. Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jack Ford. The president set off a firestorm when he took on the league and their movement. Since his response, players and entire teams have taken part by either taking a knee or locking arms on the field. Initially started by Colin Kaepernick, the protest was meant as a symbol against police brutality, but has now morphed into something more, a statement of direct resistance against the president after he weighed in on the topic. For his part, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell addressed the controversy after weeks of its simmering. We believe uh, everyone should stand for the national anthem. That's an important part of our policy. Uh, it's also an important part of our game that we all uh, take great pride in. And it's also uh, important for us to honor our flag and to our country. And we think our fans expect us to do that. Americans seem to be split over the issue, with some seeing the protest as unpatriotic, feeling that politics has no place in sports, other embracing it. Football legend, former New York Jets quarterback Joe Namath has done more than just sitting on the sidelines as this issue has been playing out on and off the field. My co-host, Rafael P. Roman, had a chance to catch up with Broadway Joe to discuss the controversy and a variety of other topics. But first, Raf asked him about another issue sweeping the NFL, brain trauma as a result of the game and how great a risk it is for players past and present. I can't go into numbers, I don't know specifically, but what we're doing, what I'm doing, concussions, traumatic brain injuries, they're not regulated to sports. And this is how I got involved. I mean, every day, kid falls off a bicycle, there's an automobile accident, a lady gets hurt, a guy gets hurt falling down. Mm -hmm. Traumatic brain injuries happen every day and there's over a couple of million people at least mm -hmm. that have them right now that can't get treatment. So why did you decide to become involved in the fight against this disease? Was there a personal reason? Absolutely. A teammate of mine, for four years, had come to a camp that a friend of mine and I have, and he'd talked to us, and he'd been to every camp for 30 years. And he was expressing to us how he was having some trouble with his memory, with forgetting too many things. And this is over a period of three four years, and I honest to God saw a terror in his eyes, a fear. He was afraid. Now this guy was never afraid of anything. He was a heck of a football player with the Jets and all. And I started wondering, you know, uh, I know I had a handful of concussions minimum. And I plan on living a while, and I figure I owed it to myself to find out my situation. I owed it to my family, my children. And so uh, we started a study, I took cognitive tests, and then I had my first brain scan, which showed damage to the left temporal and left side of my brain. Cells were not getting a blood flow. They weren't working, they, had, they were dark. And so I went through a, a series of dives uh, over a period of seven months and change, 120 dives to be exact, in the hyperbaric oxygen chamber. And after every 40 dives, I had a new cognitive test and new brain scan. So let's talk about that treatment. It's called hyperbaric oxygen therapy. What does it do and what do you hope it will accomplish? Running through your system under a pressurized environment. Uh, it's been in use for hundreds of years. And our, our Navy, the SEALs, you come up uh, out of making dives and you go into a pressure chamber and that, that's one of the ways to decompress. Uh -huh. But the use of pure oxygen to help ailments. So obviously there's at least this promising treatment for uh, football players experiencing brain injury. But what about preventing brain injury in the first place in the game of football? Do you think that's possible without transforming the game completely? No, sir, I'll tell you what. Uh, that brain's floating around in there and it's going to bounce off of that bone in there, cranium, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether you fall off a bicycle, whether you're making a tackle, whether you get hit as quarterback, go back, hard hit, but boom, the back of your head hits the ground. 
whether a guy comes across you. Know, they, we've changed the rules in football from not only the professional level, but to the elementary level, all right? We're trying to make the game, the sport, safer. But the fact of the matter is, the sport of football is a contact sport. And you're getting hit and you're hitting the ground also. So there's gonna continue to be a worry about head trauma. So how do you respond to those who say, listen, this game is just too violent for kids and children shouldn't play it? Well, if kids knew, or if they were mature enough to make a decision, or if they were like me in a sense, I never liked getting hit <laughs> from when I was a little guy, whether it be double digits, single digits, and even through pro ball, I didn't enjoy getting hit. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, children can't make that decision. The parents make it for them. And it starts out, for most of us at home, the parents influence the children. Good and not so good sometimes, but it comes from the parents, especially on an elementary level. Most of the time, that parent wants that child to be in there going, you know, he's tough, you know, yeah, yeah. But, so what would you say to those parents? Uh, I would say give them time to mature a little bit more. Give them time to let the bones, everything else get bigger as well as this. And maybe by that time, you might not even want to put them through the vigors of football. And again, it's a contact sport, man, and whoever plays it is going to get hurt. It might not be a concussion, but um, they, uh, they happen almost routinely in games. You know, this disease, and the fact that it's come to light um, has caused, you know, the, the popularity of the sport to wane a bit, right? Um, as has the political controversies that have surrounded the NFL. I wonder, if you were in your prime today, would you play the game of football? We knew nothing about uh, concussions. Mm -hmm. I would have played baseball and stuck to baseball yeah. if I knew the dangers uh, of, of the sport. Getting your bell rung was kind of, okay, I'll shake it off, I'll go. That's all any coaches, trainers ever told us. You get smelling salts and go back in there, you're tough. It was, it was a, young, a young person's game that wanted to be a man, wanted to be strong. We, we wanted to uh, get out there and play. Um, it, it's, it's a tough sport. Uh, so would you, so you wouldn't play it again if you knew what, what was going on? With the, well, given the same opportunity yeah. as when I was a younger guy, I had a chance to play another sport, you see, professionally. And so knowing what I know today with two artificial knees, artificial hips, several operations here, there, thank God not on an organ. All these organs are healthy. I'm not complaining, <laughs> mind Yeah, I am not complaining. However, uh, it, it's very physical and there are injuries involved. So Joe, why do you think it took so long for this disease to see the light of day? Is it simply because people were just completely ignorant of it in the old days? Or is it because some people just didn't want it to see the light of day because they thought it would hurt the game of football? I think now when we're talking about uh, concussions, uh, they've been around. Uh, the pugilistic arts, guys have been getting hit. And when I was a kid, I asked my daddy why this guy behaved this way in my little old hometown. He said, oh, son, he's punch drunk. Punch drunk. Okay, well that's what uh, they knew about getting in the head so much back then. Now then, the cr chronic traumatic, uh, chronic encephalopathy, that's another story. That's recently semi, I mean, fairly new to discovery and we're still working on how it can affect or kill people before you know you had to be deceased before they could detect it and now they may be on to a way to detect it earlier. Does, uh, Traumatic brain injuries bring that on. We don't even know that. But a high percentage, 90 plus percent of the guys they've exam examined it, that have been deceased uh, had it, that were football players. Yes, uh, the, the 98 percent or so. You know, Joe, the popularity of football has been waning of late. Some people argue it's because of this issue that people now realizing how uh, damaging the game could be. They just don't like it as much anymore. Another reason is the political controversy surrounding the game of football, specifically the taking of the knee during the national anthem. What's your take on that? Well, uh, I, I 
believe in standing for the national anthem. I believe in honoring our flag and our country, certainly. Uh, the knee stance was taken in the first place as a submission kind of move, as a, uh, as a respectful kind of move, and not by Colin Kaepernick initially. It was a teammate, Eric Reed, that decided, you know what, this is our flag. We got to show some respect. Let's do it. And that's their way of humbly showing respect, yet rebelling against uh, the oppression they feel that is going on. And uh, 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 but I, I, I personally uh, will stand forever for this flag in our country. Well, Joe, thanks so much for taking the time, and thank you so much for the work you're doing to fight this really terrible disease. I'm just a thankful man. Thank God every day several times and I hope we can find uh, uh, help, more help for people with traumatic brain injuries. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Raphael.